In this video, we're going to talk about making napalm, at least a version of it. But there's some history to napalm that's pretty interesting. Uh, it was first developed in 1942 at Harvard University by a Dr. Pfizer. And he developed it using a couple of powders, uh, naphthalene powder and palmitate powder. When mixed, they turned brown. And it was that powder that when you mix it with gas, it made a sticky, very flammable substance. And it was right during World War II, which is why they were even looking into this. So this is what was originally used in World War II. And it got its name, nay, palm, because of naphthalene, N-A, and palmitate, P-A-L-M. And these were the two powders that he mixed that were brown that he mixed with gas. Napalm burns at around 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can range from 1200 degrees to around 2500 degrees. Modern napalm is made differently, and it's made of polystyrene. The more modern napalm, as it's still called, was developed through an entirely different route than the napalm that was developed in 1942. You have to go back to 1839 when Ed Simon in Berlin, Germany, uh, found that when he heated the oil from the oriental sweet gum tree, a polymer was formed. And over the years, multiple testing had been done on this polymer. And finally, in 1944, the word styrofoam was first used. It was trademarked and it was patented shortly thereafter. And we all know what styrofoam is. It's the packing peanuts. You know, if you buy electronic whatever, it's packed in styrofoam. And it's the same stuff that was developed back in 1944. Styrofoam flows at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It melts at 464 degrees Fahrenheit. And what was found eventually was that if you mix polystyrene or styrofoam with gas, you develop a, a type of napalm that was more consistent than the older type, easier to make. And it ignited at around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, which was about 200 degrees lower than the earlier napalm. Uh, so it was easier to use in that regard. Kind of a side note that's interesting. It was recently found that superworms eat styrofoam and superworms honestly something i buy for a gecko i have um are pretty cheap but apparently if you put them in with some styrofoam they'll eventually finish it off buy your superworms hello this is dr mr butane fireball back with you talk a little bit about some napalm and how to make it we got our glass jar right here it's gonna be glass because gasoline just about destroys everything else you put your gasoline in your glass jar. Now, you be careful with that gas. That gas? Yeah. It's tricky, you know? A little fire probably might come by and light it on fire. But just be careful with it. Then you take your styrofoam. That's a proper name. I didn't know that. That's styrofoam. And you push it very slowly into the gasoline. And you will notice something. That it dissolves and bubbles and breaks apart. And you just keep pushing it in. It's like magic. That styrofoam just disappears. And you keep doing that. Don't put your fingers in that gas now. You just let it go and it will finish up. And you do that again and again. You can put a lot of styrofoam into gasoline. And then you wait a bit. I don't know. 10, 15 minutes. Next day. Not sure. But you wait. And you will notice you have some modern napalm. It's a gooey mess down here. But it's all stuck together in that gasoline. And that modern napalm, you got to get it out of there now to use it. As soon as you get it out of there, that gasoline starts to evaporate. And if you don't do something with the tune, it's just going to dry up and be a hard, crusty bit of stuff. So you take it out if you're going to use it and say start a fire, like on a log that won't burn well. And you kind of put it all over there. It's all gooey and messy. You'll see. And you light it. And boy, that stuff burns and burns and burns. It burns for a very long time. Now, don't you be putting this stuff in your neighbor's yard or throwing it around. This is not, napalm is not a toy, okay? So you be careful with that. Well, have fun making your napalm, be careful with it. And I'm trying it out, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's it. All right, I have some broken pieces of that styrofoam and the gas. I focused in close so you can see what happens as we stick these slowly inside.
I went ahead and put a fairly large amount of that styrofoam in here and it's all shrunk down to about an inch on the bottom of this. And that's kind of congealed. I'll just show you what happens if you try to uh, pick it up. It turns into a gooey mass. So I grabbed the uh, smallest pair of tweezers I could find. Ha ha. There we go. You can see it's kind of this gooey jelly mass. I can't, I don't think I can pick it up with these. I can a little bit, but it deflates. Or I guess it pulls out really easy. Yeah. All right. So this is a crude form of napalm. So I poured the napalm I had made on a tree branch here that just would not cut through easily. As you can see, well, it's burning all right. I was hoping it would burn through the branch, but we've got other issues going on here. Thankfully, I have a bucket of water behind me. We'll see what happens over time. Hoping that wood burns through so that whole branch there can fall back down there. I hear a slight crackle and pop from time to time, so there is some wood burning. I don't think it's going to break it up loose, unfortunately. I guess I'll keep saying that until it does break, hopefully. So another five minutes has passed. It's obviously getting smaller, but what has changed is the smoke is now white coming off of the fire. It was black from the styrofoam burning. So I would suspect that some of that is actually wood up there. Well, it burned for about a half an hour and uh, it didn't break through. So the next step is to take a shovel and hit it. Ah, darn it, that's really solid still.